just swap that. What are you doing? Oh, it's you. How did you get here? Over hill. Over there. There are fish. There are briar. Over park. Over pale. For a flood. For a fire. I do wonder. Everywhere. Swifter than the moon is fair. And I serve the fairy queen to do her off upon the green. If I mistake your shape and make you quite. Or else your last rude neighbour Sprite. Call Robin Goodfellow and not you he. The frights and maidens of the village you eat. You speak right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I, a fat and thin fed horse, beguile. Neighing in likeness of a fool. <coughs> Sometimes, lurk I in a gossip bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crown. And when she drinks against her lips, I bow, and on her withered tulip <laughs> pour the ale. The wisest aunt. Telling the saddest tale, some time for three foot still mistake of me. <laughs> then slip out from her bum, <laughs> down topple she. A merrier hour was never wasted there. Uh, Who's he Auburn these days? Well, he's having a party in the forest tonight, but make sure the fairy queen doesn't come near him because he's absolutely <coughs> furious with her about the boy she stole from an Indian king. The changeling. She adores that child. And Oberon is jealous. He wants the boy for himself to serve him in the forests. <laughs> Titania won't hand over her boy to anyone. And that's why Oberon is so angry. And also, he suspects that Titania is in love with a mortal. <gasps> he? Theseus. Ha! Duke Theseus? He's getting married on Saturday. To Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons. Really? I didn't know that. I'm sure that will be a wonderful occasion. Ha! <laughs> Might not be. How do you mean? Do you know Hermia? No. The daughter of Aegeus? Well, she's in love with Lysander. Lysander? And Lysander loves Hermia. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> but, do you know Hermia's friend, Helena? Is she the one with the... Uh, well, she loves Demetrius. Demetrius? But Demetrius doesn't love Helena. Oh dear. Demetrius loves Hermia. Demetrius loves Hermia? Yes. And Lysander loves Hermia? Yes. And who loves Helena? Nobody loves Helena. Oh. But Helena loves Demetrius. Hermia loves Lysander, and Lysander loves Hermia, so that's okay. No, it's not okay. The problem is, Hermia's father, Aegeus, is demanding that Hermia must marry Demetrius. Why? Because he thinks Lysander's not good enough. And according to the law of Athens, if Hermia disobeys her father, <coughs> or she'd be shut away in a nunnery for the rest of her life. Right, anyway, can't stand here all day chatting. Got places to go. I'm sure you have. Happy wandering.
chance the roses there do fade so fast. Be like for want of rain, which I could well but heem from the tempest of my eyes. Ay me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. Oh cross, too I to be enthralled too low. So hear me, Hermia, I have a widow aunt, and she had no child, from Athens is her house most seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. If thou lovest me then, still forth to my father's house tomorrow night, and in the woods, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly I will meet with thee. Hey, promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair, not fair again and say. Demetrius loves your fair, O oh, happy fair. O oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hates me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None, but your beauty, would that fault were mine. Take comfort, you no more shall see my face. Lysander is myself, will fly this place. Helena, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, through Athens' gates, have we devised to steal. Helena, at you, as you on him, Demetrius dotes on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. To the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. on his wedding day night. First go treat the quigs, say what the play treats on, then read the name of the actors, so grow to a point. Mary, it is the most lamentable comedy and cruel death of Permis and Thisbe. Oh, how boring. <laughs> <laughs> a very good piece of work, I assure you. 
Anna Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors according to the scroll. Answer as I call your name. Nick Bottom the Baker. Present. Name you, what plot I am for and proceed. You are set down for Pyramus. And what is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? <laughs> It is a lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Mm. That will call for some tears in the true performing of it. Let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. <laughs> Yet, my chief humour is for a tyrant. I can play Hercules rarely. Or a part of Paul McCain. <laughs> <laughs> the raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison's gates, and Phoebus' car shall shine from afar and make another the foolish fakes. <coughs> that was lofty. That was lofty. <laughs> now, then where's your place? Francis Blut. The road digger. Here, Peter Quince. Blit, you must take Thisbe on you. Here is Thisbe, the wandering knight. It is a lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't play a woman. I've got a beard coming. That is all one. You may play it in a mask and speak as small as you will. Oh, let me play Thisbe, and I will hide my face in too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Disney, Disney. Oh, Pyramus, my dear. I, my lady dear, and lover dear. <laughs> no, no, you must play Pyramus and flirt you, Thisbe. Very well. Proceed. Robin Starling, the hat maker. Here, Peter Quince. Starling. You must play Thisbe's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's night the DJ. Tom's, Tom's night the, the DJ. Tom's night the DJ. Here, Peter Quince. It's night. You, Permis's mother. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the rugby coach. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Have you got the lion's part written? If, if it be, give it to Snook. He was, he was slow of study. Speak for yourself, Lou. You may do an exemplar, <laughs> for it is nothing but roaring. <laughs> oh, let me play the lion too. I will roar that will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that the Duke may say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. Your French colour crown bit. 
the perfect yellow. Ooh la la. Chicago <laughs> we win. Some of your friends' crimes have no hair at all. And then you will play a bare fist. But masters, here are your parts. <coughs> and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to calm them by tomorrow night and meet me in Palace Wood, a mile without time by moonlight. There will we rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of property such as our play once. I pray you feel me not, and there we will meet. And we will rehearse most obscenely and courageously. <laughs> Take pains. Be perfect. Perfect? You're telling me to be perfect? At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough! Now hold! Or cut both strings! Here comes Oberon. Oh, here comes my lady. Oh, only Oberon is gone. Titania. What? Jealous Oberon? Skip hence, Ferris, for I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry! Rash wanton. I'm not I thy lord. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a fortress of my order. Give me that boy! Not for thy fairy kingdom! Fairies! Away! Yeah. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury! My gentle puck, come hither. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make our man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girl around about the earth in 40 minutes. <coughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania while she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking up looks upon, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, and I'll make her render up her boy to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear the conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you bait me, I will fall on you, 
Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am to follow you. I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. Let me go, or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. Snakes, 
Sub Suburbia. If you think it good. Beat so Lysander, find you out a bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One's hearth shall serve as pillow for us both. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Lie further off, in human modesty, such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. I gone, but Athenian find I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flourish, force, and stirring love. Night and silence. Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden sleeping sound on this dank and dirty mound. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl upon thine eyes I throw, all the power this charm doth owe. So wake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. <laughs> Who is here? My sounder on the ground, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. My sounder, if you live, good sir, awake. Not Hermia, but Helena, my love, who will not change a raven for a dove. Good troth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do. Fare you well. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come the sander near. All my powers address your love and might to honour Helena and to be her knight. Lysander? Lysander, Lord, Alec, where are you?
this convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This towering house, this Hawthorne break, our towering house. And we will rehearse the action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. What says thy bottom? There are things in, in this comedy of Pyramus and Bisbee that will never please. First, good Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? We must keep the killing out when all is done. Not a whit! Peter Quince, write me a prologue to say that we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed, and that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Baker. That should put them out of their feet. And would not the ladies be afraid of the lion? Well then, he must name his name. And half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he must speak through, saying, ladies, or, Fair ladies, <laughs> I entreat you, do not fear or tremble, for I am a man like any other man, and state plainly that he is snug the rugby coach. <laughs> but how to bring the moonlight into a chamber? For Pyramus and Thisbe you know me by moonlight. That's right. Does the moon shine the night we play the play? Yes, the moon does shine that night. Well, maybe we could... Be the casement of the great chamber room window where we play our play open, and the moon may shine in through the casement. I, or one starling, must come in with a bush of thorn and a lantern, and say he comes to present the person of moonshine. Then there's another thing. We need a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe says a story that talk through the chink of a wall. Here we go again. We could never have a wall. What say you, Peter Quince? Well, well then, some man or other must present a wall. And he may hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <clears throat> If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down and rehearse your parts. Permis, exit. This be you begin. <laughs> <laughs> what hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. What a play, Ward. I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Paramus, enter, your cue is passed. Paramus, enter. <laughs> ah! If I were there, oh, yeah. yeah. oh monstrous, oh strange, we are haunted. I see them, knavery. This is to make an ass of me. To fright me if they could. I will sing, but they will see I am not afraid. The owls all cock so black of you with orange tawny tail. The frost of wind is no so true. The red with lips of grey. The frost of wind is so true. The red with little quill. Eeyore! 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 
O oh, gentle mortal, sing again, for my ah, ear is but enamoured by thy note, and my eye, my eye, is enthralled by her she. Since first I met you, I would say I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you have little reason for that. Oh, I am a spirit of no common race. And I love thee. I love thee. Go with me, and I will have my fairies to attend thee. <laughs> ah, this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched to Athenian's eye with the love juice? I took him sleeping, not as finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of force she must be eyed. Stand close, this is the same Athenian. This is a woman, but not this a man. Out dog, out cur, hast thou slain then? I am not guilty of my father's blood. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce being. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some other true love's sight. <sighs> About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartars. Boom! Flower in this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye when his love he doth espy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me. Pleading for a lover's fee, shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. I therefore rob an overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray that one comes not within another's way. Then crush the herd into Lysander's eye. On the ground, sleep sound, 
I'll apply to your eyes, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takes true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye, and all shall be well. Did you ask of her 
her changing child? I did, which straight she give me. Now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. I would have you think 
which had in it a cranny nuker chink, <laughs> through which the loafers, Pyramus and Fisbee, did often whisper secretly. <laughs> The sense, the sporpus, the sporpus, the stall, the stall, and the smooth the sense. Now I am dead. Boom. 
think of this and all it meant that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and <coughs> idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to skip the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So, good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Thank you.